Yes, welcome to Farm Smart Show. You know, when, whenever I come, whenever I visit a farm, it's my joy because I know every time I visit a farm, I'm going to get to learn something new. I'm going to meet new people. We are going to get to learn something different from whatever we are going to, from whatever we have been seeing. Welcome to Farm Smart Show with me, Chris Chitakahaman, your host. Every Friday we are here to bring you new exciting ideas, exciting tips on how best you can grow crops and how best you can rear animals and this time around we have come back to Intungo pastures and we are going to be looking at cattle farming, dairy farming but first of all we are going to start from pasture. We covered a bit of it last time and we are going to learn more from it. Nice to meet you madam. Nice to meet you too Chris. Yes. Uh, my name is Yasim Wejoli. I'm a co-director, stroke manager of Itungo Pastures here. Uh, Itungo Pastures is located in Wakiso town, that is along Hoima Road, 19 kilometers from Kampala town. We are located in a village called Choga. And as you have heard Itungo Pastures, we are doing pastures. Yeah, we do pasture production, pasture establishment. We do sell pasture seeds and seedlings. Uh, we teach people pasture preservation, we do have pasture silage cutting machines, everything farmers use, they need to do in dairy farming. Yes. We do have it here. Okay. Tungo pastures. I have been inspired because there is some great change from the, from, uh, from, from the last time we came here, we did, you didn't have this structure, but now you can see you put up something new. Yes, last time we talked about pasture. And Mr. Businge explained how we grow our pasture, how we make silage and hay. So now we have seen some process here that has just happened here. We have seen some new machine. Talk about it, please. Okay, thank you, Chris. This machine here, it is called the silage chopping machine. And when we do chop silage, usually it's one way of how we can do pasture preservation. From, make, from chopping the pastures here, you can either take and feed direct to your cows or you do what we call silage making. As you have seen, we have chopped our pastures here. Uh, this is Brakeria mulatto and the Chloris Guyanahe. We have done the mixture. And right away from here, we are, we are going to mix later on, then we feed our dairy cows. Before you take us inside to show us how you mix, eh? yes. do you only have to put only two types or you can mix so many types as you uh, It's not a matter of uh, making many types. Mm. Usually when we are feeding dairy cows, we do mixture. All these pastures you see here also, they are categorized in two, three. Uh, we've got pastures for making silage. Then we also have pastures that make hay. As you have seen, this is the Chloris Guyana hay. When I talk of hay, I simply mean the dry grass. Then we also have pastures for making silage. And so we are going to mix these three categories, as you're going to see later on and as I'm going to be explaining. Yes. All right, as you've heard, right now we are going inside to mix our our feeds. We are going to mix our feeds for animals. Move with us. So, uh, Chris, yes. as you have seen, as an organized farm, we have an office. I hope you have seen it there. Yeah. This is our working area, stroke a training center. We also do trainings. And right here, we are going to mix our feeds. These are some of the pasture varieties, not all of them. These are the ones that we have been chopping. Yes. I'm going to do the mixing and then we feed our cows as you're going to see. So here, this is now our silage. I told you after chopping those grass, you can either do silage. Silage is here. It is one of the ways of preserving pastures. Very, it really has a very good aroma. Even you may feel like you want to eat. You want to test it? Eh? <laughs> yeah, okay. this is very good. The way you're seeing it here, yeah. it can be kept for a long period of time. Okay. Yeah, so. What do we need to know first before you mix? Of course, before you do the mixing, you're supposed to plant pastures and you must be having grass. Then after 
after, after planting them, we have harvested. What you have to have in mind, you don't just mix, no. Uh, these animals you see here, they are also like human beings and they need to have a balanced diet. Yeah, and right here we've got our proteins, we've got our, our carbohydrates, energy, and everything. You don't just mix, that's why you can see we have different types here. Talking about a sun like hygiene, eh? do we have to lay them on ground or you have to put them on something? Like uh, if you don't have this floor, kind of floor. If you don't have this kind of floor, you can sweep your wherever, which wherever. If you have your clean ground, you can put there or you look for the tarpaulin. Then you do your mixture from there. Okay. Yes. How you can show us how you so, mix. So as it's mixing, what if I don't have this, this kind of feeds, what else can I feed my cows? Uh, sincerely speaking, uh, when you, you want to do farming, there is no shortcut, by the way. Okay. I have told you that here we do trainings. So some of the things, before you do anything, as in stocking the animals, you're supposed to, if I'm to tell you one of the requirements that you should have. Okay. I would say number one, you should have feeding, you should have feeds, number two feeds, number three feeds. It's very, very wow. important. Feeds, feeds, feeds. Yes. Okay. There is nothing like what if I don't have this? No. You're supposed to do it if you are to do a successful dairy farming. Okay. Because I told you these animals, they need proteins, they need carbohydrates, and they need energy. Okay. Yes. Right. So you really, you're supposed to have them. There is no shortcut. So now talking about these feeds, how many times are you supposed to feed these animals in a day or? Uh, these animals, if you're feeding, this, this, this type of feeds that we are giving, it's a very good one and it is rich in all the protein nu nutrients yes. that animals should have. Uh, these animals, they don't eat a lot. As you can see, a day, it, per cow here, it eats between 20 to 25 kilograms. That is a mixture of this, but I know there are some farmers outside there who are still feeding on fresh grass. Uh, fresh grass is not poisonous. Animals, they do eat it. But when you're feeding on fresh grass, just to get to know that the animals will eat non-stop. It will eat and then it fills up the stomach. Then it gives the cow dung and again where it has stopped, it comes back and eat almost for the whole day. And usually that is the feeding. When you the times eating, you know you're not feeding good feeds. Yes. Uh, it is supposed to eat just like a very small portion. Then after eating, uh, as you can see here, it's, it's drinking water, yes. it takes water, and then after it is supposed to go in their resting areas and they rest. Yes, before we get there to resting and taking water, yes. let me first take you back. Eh? Yes. Let's first talk about the structure, the structure of our animals, because it is also so important. Mm. Yes. So as you can see, usually the formula of the structure is actually like this. Uh, there is a standing area where the, the cows should stand. Then there is a feeding area. Then there is where you're supposed to have, to have the water troughs and also the resting area. As you can see, whether you want to use asbestos, whether you want to do the tilings and everything, but the formula is always one. Yes. What about the ventilation, air circulation, all kind of stuff? Actually, the, the, the area where the cows should be, it should be very well aerated, as you can see ours here. Out of reach of rain? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, animals, they can even, uh, rain has no problem. But the problem, why we are saying very well aerated, uh, they should get the, the heat stress. Yeah. 
Okay, so now you have explained to us about the structure, yes. how to design it, ventilation, everything. Yes. So now tell us, what do we need to put in this structure? We have seen the water space and then the feeding space. So how do you... You can see right here, this is our water trough. You can see it has a transparent iron sheet. These animals, they don't need to take very cold water. When you put the very cold water, you will see them not taking water. And we all very well know that 80% of milk is composed of water. Yeah, so when the cows don't take water, you yourself, you know that you're making a loss. Explain more about that cold water. Someone out there would like to know about it, yes. You eat and every farmer just get to know that you're not supposed to give that cold water. That's why we put the transparent iron sheet. What so effect does it cause to animals? What does the it? effect, the effect of cold water to animals? Uh, they don't like it, so they won't take it. That's why there is a transparent iron sheet up so that when it shines, it comes direct so that it warms this water a bit. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you can explain the feeding area. Here we make it like, we made it like this so that when we are feeding here, this feed don't fall on the ground. And you're supposed to make sure that the feeding, tr the feeding truck is very clean. That's why I told you, for us here, we made it a, a daily routine. Every morning, we wake up and do that cleaning. And the, to farmers outside, outside there who may think that maybe me, I'm very busy, I'll get like the feeds for the whole day, maybe I feel up to the brim. Mm. That is not how things should be done. Actually, you should be putting very small so that each time they eat and they finish, they go for resting. When they come back, they have to feel that the feed they are eating, they are new. Okay. Yes. These animals, you see, they are like us human beings. It's like now you eating food, you leave it on the plate, and maybe later on you come back and then you eat the leftovers. Mm. That is not good. Okay. Yes. So now, after talking about the feeding area, mm. tell us, how best do we take care of these animals? Um, these animals, first of all, you're supposed to be spraying against the ticks. Uh, like here, we do it twice a day. You, you spray. You're supposed to, to give very clean water. You have seen our water here. Of course, you feed. And that is all. Most of the times, the problem comes from the ticks. OK, what else is needed for us to take care of these animals very well? Uh, of course, first of all, we need good manage after, after feeds. I told you number one feeds, number two feeds, number three feeds. Then after, you need good management. Uh, any person, if you are to, to keep these animals very well, actually, you see these animals, for them, they don't talk. So it would have been better every morning you take their temperatures. If you take the temperatures, that will help you to know this one is not very good because just using our eyes, by the time you, you look at the animal and it is like not feeling well, for it maybe it has not been feeding well for like two or three days back. So it's better to take the temperatures you know. When the temperatures are not normal, then you give like the painkillers. Uh, from here, from the feeding troughs here, it is where actually you can also determine that the animals are not doing well. You can see now here, they are enjoying the feed. That means we have given the good feed. This is what we call feed palatability. They are eating these feeds at ease. And so any animal that is not feeling well, here you will be seeing it, not eating. 